President. Senator from Kansas. Madam President, I rise today in support of H.J. Resolution 26, a resolution to overturn the recent law passed by the Washington, D.C. Council to revise the city's criminal code. I was pleased to join Senator Haggerty as an original co-sponsor of the Senate version he introduced in February. The nation's capital is a unique American city in that it was established through ratification of the United States Constitution in order to host the federal system of government established by our founders, separate from the authority of any one single state. Founded in 1790, the city has grown immensely since its earliest years and with a population of nearly 700,000, has become one of the largest cities in the region. In addition to the residents of the city and those that commute daily from neighboring Maryland and Virginia, Washington, D.C. hosts nearly 20 million visitors on an annual basis, one of the most visited cities in the United States. As Americans from all 50 states, including my home of Kansas, come to the seat of their government to meet with their elected officials and visit the National Mall, memorials, and museums their tax dollars go to maintaining every year. Sadly, as the capital city has expanded, so too is the influence of far-left politicians who serve as members of the council. Similar to their Democrat counterparts in the White House, Congress, and other U.S. metro areas, the D.C. Council has gone full tilt in giving the keys of this city to its criminals and vagrants and failing in their duty to protect its inhabitants and visitors. This culture of lawlessness, the same that is on display at our southern border, where just yesterday we learned two of the four Americans kidnapped by the Gulf Cartel were brutally murdered. That this is a product of cashless bail laws and efforts to defund the police. In D.C., these efforts have come in the form of major cuts to the city's police department. In 2020, the council implemented a $15 million cut to their own police force. $15 million. Since then, the number of sworn officers has decreased steadily, year over year, and predictably, crime has been running rampant ever since. In 2021, more than 200 homicides were committed, the first time homicides surpassed 200 since 2003. In 2022, D.C. topped this mark again, and its trend is continuing in 2023. Crime is up 25% from this time last year. Murders are up 33%. Sexual abuse crimes are up 120%. And motor vehicle thefts are up 108%. Shockingly, despite these staggering numbers, the D.C. Council, over the objections of the city's police chief and chief prosecutor, moved in November of last year to eliminate mandatory minimum sentences and reduce maximum penalties for these very crimes. Now, thankfully, the same constitution that established the capital city gave Congress authority over the district. And while I am a strong supporter of local control, Republicans in Congress have taken an important stand to not stand by and watch the radical D.C. Council further inflame the crime wave engulfing our constituents' capital city. I myself am afraid for my own wife to walk from our apartment to the capital. I'm afraid for my own staff to walk from working here to their own homes. This last Christmas, I gave every woman on my staff a special device to be able to defend herself should she be attacked. This is real. We see it every day in this city. We see the crime everywhere we go. This city is no longer safe. This city no longer belongs to the people. This city now belongs to the criminals. I know the Democrats in the House did not get the memo from the president in time that he would sign our legislation into law, overturning the D.C. Council's overhaul. But I'm glad our colleague across the aisle here in the Senate will be joining him in passing this important bill in order to blunt the crime, victimizing the residents and visitors of the city, and the efforts of the D.C. Council to return the District of Columbia back to, back to the murder capital of America. Unfortunately, we know this is just a politically motivated move to protect their electoral chances in 2022. Lawlessness runs deep in the Democrat Party, and no matter how they vote today, much more must be done to turn back the harm they've done to our inner cities and at our southern border. I yield back.